This NFC South preview edition of the Sports Gaming Podcast is presented by MyBookie.ag. This week only, MyBookie is offering up to $200 in free bets using the promo code SGP200. That's right, up to $200 in free bets with only a one-time rollover requirement. Use SGP200 to play, win, and get paid at MyBookie.ag. We're also brought to you by PlayBalto, the number one office pool hosting site. PlayBalto is fully customizable, easy to manage, and most importantly, free. If you're running a football pool this season, make your life easy and do it on PlayBalto. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com and click the PlayBalto link to sign up today. Woo! Welcome, everyone, to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean Stacking That Money Green with my partner in picks, Ryan Real Money Kramer. What's up, Kramer? Okay, Sean. Taping this. Taping? What's a tape? Yes. Live to tape. Thursday, August 8th, the mm. debut of Daniel Scones Jones. Ryan, there was so much hate. There was so much hate, and he came out. Someone's. I need a Daniel Jones jersey right now. <laughs> How do you not have one? Are you? See, that's the thing. You, you are waiting to see. Sean, I'm very ri- risk. Here's what. Here's I'm what. I'm pretty ha- risk averse. I'm waiting. I I bought a Carson Wentz jersey prior to mm, him being named the starter. But look at again, you. that was just because I believe that Sam Bradford is not a fucking <laughs> franchise quarterback. So it was. It was in order to move Sam Bradford off, and and God bless. Teddy Bridgewater for destroying his poor legs yeah, and setting the domino in order that got us a uh, Super Bowl champion first ever. The, the Butler has never been the same. No, he really hasn't. He really hasn't. He's uh, he's pretty devastated. So much to get to. I had a nice little run. 3-0-1 with my preseason picks. Ravens, as we mentioned a couple uh, days ago or whatever podcast ago, Ravens undefeated in the preseason, dominating performance. Just put the Jags in a body bag. Is that the thirteenth straight win? Is that was oh that no, the, or was it seventeen? It's uh, I think we're sixteen and zero run so on 17, the Ravens. Then. Yeah, because I think they the past th- the previous three seasons they wow. were undefeated. Oh, so you're right. Maybe it was thirteen, but then I think they had a couple even going into the season before. Either way, impressive run. Jeff Schwartz, who is a uh, former, I think he played for the Giants. Offensive yeah, yeah. Lineman, Chiefs and Giants. Worked with him on the uh, ESPN Plus show. Good dude. He was uh, he was on Cousin Sal's program, and he he brought up a good point, saying that the defensive minded head coaches are more inclined to win in preseason. And again, I think it just speaks to the idea that the defense is ahead of the offense. They really want to oh, yeah. see their defense. You're also more inclined to leave your defensive starters out there. He, uh, I don't know what it is, but leaving out a first team defense is different than leaving in your first team offense. I think, yeah. I mean, I, I was going to, I think you say it the other way around. I think you say you're more likely to take out your first string you important go. offensive players. And, and yeah, that's definitely true. Like, I mean, I, I was watching, uh, yeah, it, it did seem like the, some teams went comically quick. Like why bring it back to my giants but wh- why not give daniel jones a couple more reps do you really need to see that much alex tanny well i it the giants are in a weird position because it clearly seems like he is the starter now mm. but eli manning face of the franchise two super bowl wins um he uh ryan i don't know what you got going on here you're you're adjusting the screen. If you want to see uh, Ryan's screen, I was go trying to, to figure YouTube out what was going on here. Slash Sports Gambling Podcast, pulling up the Football Outsiders doc while we're recording the podcast. Hey, we're figuring this stuff out. But wh- fire the intern. Where was I going? What was I? Ta- I was. Uh, God damn it. We were fine until you pointed out what I was doing. Sean. Well, it was. I was. I saw it out of the corner of my eye. But um, oh, the Giants, their quarterback situation. <laughs> Daniel Jones looks uh, much better than Eli Manning, but again, that's like getting a gold medal in the Special <laughs> Olympics. <laughs> oh, <laughs> coming in hot. Well, let's be honest. I could, I could look decent if I had the first team offense going up a second team defense. I could, I could complete some passes. That being said, I think they. At what level could you complete passes, Sean? Uh, they, 
pull Daniel Jones because they kind of want Daniel Jones to be the starter, but the ownership won't let them. This is coaching. The ownership won't let them start Eli Manning. Or, okay. Or not start Eli Manning week one. Is I, there a scenario now? Are you rooting ooh. for Eli Manning not to be the starter week one? Am I rooting for it? Well, what do you want? You you've been just a fence sitter on this Daniel Jones thing. <laughs> you're afraid to commit. You're afraid to let your fan side take over, and you're just hedging your bets left and right. Uh, take us through, Ryan. You're not you're not wanting to push Eli Manning out. Well, I'm gonna pull up. Uh, let's see here. At I don't know what time this was. 4:43 p.m. Yes. August 8th, 2019. I tweeted, "Just gonna leave this here," <laughs> and it was a Bleacher Report pop up on five my phone. Five for five. Perfect drive. One touchdown. I'm in. He you looked in. great. We had a uh, we had a contest, Kramer, in our newsletter. That's why you gotta s- subscribe to the you newsletter. Gotta subscribe. Every uh, every time we put out a newsletter, also giving away some cold, hard cash to the listeners because they deserve it. If you haven't signed up, you're missing out. You can go to uh, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash newsletter. Drop your old email in there. We're not going to spam you. It's just basically links to us giving you money and links to tons of free content and free podcasts. You're welcome. So if that isn't your thing, then don't subscribe. If you don't like cash, free blog posts, free podcasts about sports gambling if that's not your thing then <laughs> how why the fuck are you watching this or listening to this and we did a uh we did a little uh, challenge guess daniel jones scones passing yards for his opening performance even threw in an option for td interceptions as a tiebreaker i i i, I gotta look through the results but i feel like sean some i have no idea close. i don't know how we're gonna grade this because i think we just asked for a stat line no, no, no. We asked for pass, passing yards was the number one, and then okay. touchdowns and interceptions were tiebreakers. All right. But I, I think – I We think got someone, some guys who are fairly close on the yardage. Yeah, because I think someone had 67 yards, and he ended up with 63 yards. So that could be the winner. I don't think Stay anyone for that. had him um, having more touchdowns than interceptions. I will that say was that. not the case. The chip, just the, so, the, the legend so, of the chip on Daniel Jones's someone, shoulder. Someone said in 250 <laughs> passing yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. I don't think they're aware of how preseason football works, but uh, uh, good times there. In other news, real quick, before we get to the NFC South, I don't know if you saw the Browns coming out, running, hurry up. Oh, yeah. They were, they were just, uh, Sean, do you know how much I love that under nine that I, that I wagered after what the, are they the doing? AFC North podcast and one last Baker's thing. taking photos in preseason. Hey, Whoa. save the dances for the regular season Baker. And oh. I, and I, I've kind of like, I like a guy who shotguns a beer. I, I like yeah. that, but, yeah. uh, you gotta, uh, I don't know. He, he's walking a fine line there. Yeah. He, he's not the guy that's going to maintain a talking a about Duke career. Johnson's money. Talk well, Duke Johnson ain't there no more. No yeah. surprise there. Traded to the Texans. One last thing, tie a little boat trip. Tying a bow on the AFC North, which we already recorded. You yeah, check, check that, that out. out. How do, how can people subscribe, Sean? SportsGamblingPodcast.com. dot com. There Click you the go. iTunes. And while you're there, leave a rating and a review. Four hundred and ninety one ratings. Four point eight wow. average. That's pretty good. Wow. But I'll be honest, we can do better. How are we not up to 500 ratings? Come on. What more do you want? Uh, I don't I don't think people up, realize right? how much up. energy, sweat, tears we put into this. It's exactly. not hard to to not hard to put a review in. And for those who complain that they listen on a Google device, yeah, sorry. Just figure it out. Yeah. Thank you. Don't, you. you don't have a web browser you can just open. Thank you. Try li- you don't have any sort of iTunes <laughs> account. Come on. You can't Drink. walk into an Apple store. You don't find yourself walking. Past. Hey, if you're really if you're really a Google truther, an Android head, that's cool. But just walk into an Apple store, subscribe to like 12 phones and write <laughs> awesome reviews. Send Thank that you. video in and you'll be a hero. AFC North wanted to clean something up. I, Sean, I found I, I went out into the ether and I found a Steelers make the playoffs minus hmm. 110 bet. So. Oh, lock wanted that to up. let everyone know that I also got down on that. So, yeah, I like. I mean, that's almost 
What were they to win the division? Plus 190 or 175? Uh, let me pull. You know what, Sean? Let me pull up the wagers that I'm already down on. What did we have in the sheet here? Uh, one, uh, two, 190. 190. Mm. Actually, I would just. I'm 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 loving the over, but division at 190. Why well, take the division? Well, I mean 190 is almost double. Yeah, I would take that. The Browns should not be fake. All right, let's. <laughs> We're talking about the NFC anyway, South. Let's, let's do Kramer. it. Before we do, a couple announcements we got to get to. Oh. Coming for the National Football season. Kramer, everyone knows we're going to be out in beautiful, sunny, hot Las Vegas for the kickoff week one NFL. September 5th, first game. What you don't know is we will be hosting a live event, a meet and greet, if you will, at Lagasse <laughs> Stadium. Awesome place to hang out. We will be doing a live broadcast leading up to the kickoff of the NFL season and then hang out with us if you're coming to Vegas or if you're in the Vegas area drinks food on us Legacy Stadium if you haven't been to it it's it's from the Emerald gentleman <laughs> world-class cook and uh, it's a it's a sweet place to watch a game because just screens everywhere the food's legit tons of drinks on us come out handshakes if you're a guy who wants to take a photo we'll do a photo and if you're if you're doing that, if you're going to be in the Vegas area, plan on coming out to Vegas Week One. Awesome time to come out uh, to Las Vegas. Score yourself some merch. We just relaunched the merch store with a bunch of new, legit stuff. Drip Squad is in full effect, Kramer, with these. Uh, it's just aw awesome shirts, like legit. You got a North Face jacket in there, Adidas, Under Armour, names you love, names you trust. Get that and uh, show up and hang with us. Legacy Stadium, September 5th for the Bears-Chicago kickoff game. So make sure you come out for that. And now, Ryan, transitioning. Because it is football and it is the Sports Gambling Podcast. And, of course, that means we are presented by MyBookie.ag. MyBookie, the leader when it comes to online sportsbooks. Easy deposits. Most importantly, easy withdrawals. You can use that sweet, sweet cryptocurrency. Right now, they're running a little uh, special bonus action. Use that promo code SGP200. Only 1x rollover, and you can get up to $200 of free bets. So if this is the time when you when you like to get your big season deposit in over at mybookie.ag, load up for the season, I would do it now because this 1x rollover requirement probably not going to be around for a long time and uh, you want to get it while it's hot also while you're there sign up for the mybookie.ag super contest it's a super contest where you don't need a proxy all you need is a hundred dollars over at mybookie.ag hundred thousand dollar prize to first place guaranteed could be more as every dollar they get entered in the contest is going back to you the listeners and the winners mybookie.ag promo code sgp200 by the way, Sean. Yes. Great sponsor, my bookie. I, I noticed they must have listened, Sean. They must have listened to the AFC North preview where I told the world I would take their Browns will not make the Super Bowl or not win the conference bets. Guess what they're now offering? Really? They are offering a way to take the other side of a team winning the Super Bowl. So you That's can lay 2,000. And take the Browns That's at my awesome. to not win the Super Bowl because I, uh, I know that certain Vegas shops had started offering the will not win the Super Bowl or whatever championship bets. I didn't know, and, and they got to email me, man, because I would have touted the shit out of that. That's awesome, and uh, seriously, great opportunity. So get over there, mybookie.ag. So Thursday night, here's the Vegas plan. Thursday night, we will be at Legacy Stadium drinks food on us come out hang out if you plan on coming out drop us a line podcast at sports gambling podcast.com limited seating so make sure uh if you're planning on coming rsvp or if you're not going to be out there you can watch we're going to be doing like a live stream periscope 
some version of that. So that'll be fun. Yep. And then Sean, Sunday. <laughs> Sean's only got one lap, so get that email over. Seating is limited. <laughs> And then Sunday we will be post up, uh, posting up football central over at the Westgate Sportsbook. Friend of the program, Jay Carnegie, hooking us up with a table there. So if you're if you're getting to Vegas, not getting out, maybe come out Friday. If you're working for the man, you can't do the Thursday. Uh, come say hi over there, and again, we'll grab you a drink and uh, shoot the shit while we're watching games and cashing tickets. All right, let's get to it. Kramer, first up, we have the Atlanta Falcons. Right now, their win total, whoo, eh, nine. Over 105, minus 135, division, plus 375, conference, 1600, Super Bowl, 3,000. Vet ads. We got Kenyon Barner, Ted and Luke Stocker, guard Jamon Brown, guard James Carpenter, defensive end, Adrian Claiborne, defensive tackle, Tyler Davidson. Davidson? Who do they got? Draft picks. <laughs> Chris Lindstrom, Ooh. guard. He drafted the guard a little high. Offensive tackle, Caleb McGarry. He's dealing with a weird hard thing. He's going to be out. Cornerback, Kendall Sheffield. DN, John Kaminsky. Who they lose? Tevin Coleman, that's big. Uh, guard, Andy Lavitri. Guard, Ben Garland. Brooks Reed, Bruce Irvin. Tara McLean. Robert Alford. Uh, Justin Bethel. And kicker, Matt Bryant. For some reason... That guy is he's just fucking automatic. He's not a guy I would get rid of. Here's his, my his hamstring blew up on that like fifty what was it, fifty eight yard kick? Yeah, but come on, man. He hasn't kicked since. The guy's it's you time can't. to take him out behind the shit, Sean. <laughs> you ask the ask the San Diego Chargers or the Tampa Bay Bucks. You need a good kicker because that's going to cost you games. You do, Sean. Be right. Before we start previewing the actual team, since you're talking about Atlanta Falcons kickers. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to highlight a, another one of these quotes, um, and, and it's about the punter, Matt Bosher. Okay. Quote, everyone was right. I did get called in for a drug test today. Atlanta, uh, Atlanta Falcons punter Matt Bosher leveled a Carolina Panthers returner in week 16, leading to a random drug test by the NFL. Quote, the, the NFL random drug test is basically considered a, com a compliment these last few years. You ball out, you piss in a cup. It's easy as that. <laughs> <laughs> former Indianapolis coach Matt, Pat McAfee. Yeah, uh, listen, this this Falcons team is is intriguing to me. Here 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 are my my big big picture thoughts on the Atlanta Falcons. Not having Steve Sarkeesian has to help this team. There's no has way to. around it. I like I like shitting on Matty Ice. You know, call him Matty Water Ice, Matty Melt. But this is setting up this situation is setting up pretty decent for the Falcons. We've hit on it a couple times, so it's worth reiterating. Interesting schedule quirk. Atlanta only has three outdoor games. It's their so first crazy. of which they don't play an outdoor game until November seventeenth. Also, the 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 Falcons they've been secretly good in the division. Six and one the last seven against Carolina. Five straight over the Bucks. Maybe that changes, but certainly recent dominance in the division could help the Falcons Calvin Ridley that guy's on on pace to have a nice year year two showed a lot of potential in the rookie year set a bunch of records maybe he doesn't have quite the touchdowns but he should be a productive guy he's got some hammy issues but getting back to the indoor outdoor splits I mean that's Matt Ryan's wheelhouse Matt Ryan last year 9.0 yards per attempt indoors 7.2 yards per attempt outdoors. That's a huge difference. Granted, eight of those games were home already, so that kind of factors into why, partly why the yards per attempt is a little higher in the indoors besides the split there. But if you're getting nine point yard, if you're hitting nine in yards per attempt or even the high sevens, you're going to win some games. And my last kind of big picture point on the Falcons is. Their defense was horrible last year, and a big reason why their defense was horrible was really bad injury luck, like historically bad injury luck uh, for the Atlanta Falcons on defense. Like, they just didn't have anyone. They were a freaking sieve, especially at the linebacker position. So if they can just kind of have some guys stay healthy, they can have not drunk-ass Steve Sarkeesian win a couple of the close games that they were in and, and fucked up, uh, this team could kind of be in the mix. I, I didn't think I would like the Falcons 
and then kind of was walking through the numbers and and stuff uh that i factor in you know the warren sharps the football outsiders kind of some of the previous stuff you know all those analytics you like to consume sure uh, I, I like reading them but gut, <laughs> but gut instinct originally told me that atlanta falcons they were dog shit last year, but a lot of that, in hindsight, was just this porous defense. The offense and wasn't bad for as much as we bag no, on and, and Sarkeesian. Yeah. Uh, he's just fun to make fun of because he blamed uh, him getting fired on his disease called alcoholism. Yeah. <laughs> I had the disease. If I get fired from the Sports Gambling Podcast, I might have a case, right? Sean, uh, yeah, I, I think – you know the the thesis i think uh warren sharp touches on a little of this but the football outsiders really go into it that the thesis was the team really wasn't that bad last year uh but for whatever for whatever reason they they absolutely freaked out and they point out that it's very uh, it's very rare for a team although they have this positive scheduling quirk right where they're going to be inside although they looked like they were they were a pretty good team last year um, definitely on the so offense for side seven of the ball, and nine, they were Sarkeesian. They, they, they weren't that bad. The, the offense was not that bad. Um, they were pretty good. And I don't know if Dirk Cutter makes that offense better, but more importantly, they're replacing every coordinator, every single coordinator. And so it's an interesting move. That's a, that's a move before the coach gets fired. It's not a move that leads to success unless you're the 2007 New York Giants. Well, caveat there, Sean. It's <laughs> a good point. I, the other the other angle is you you talk about the schedule. Now, while they do have that quirk of not go, having to go five straight road games that are indoors essentially or or could be indoors depending on the the, the status of the roof. But they it's a hard schedule. They're not. They're not the easy. There's not any walks in this road slate at Minnesota. At I mean, we'll go through the schedule in a bit, but they have. They are one of the teams that had an easy schedule. Like like most of this division, they had an easy schedule last year. That schedule toughens up this year, and while I think they will experience some regression upwards, I don't know if it's enough to counterbalance the difficulty in the schedule. Mm. And the turnover, I think they, they there is slow start written all over this because they have all these new coaches. Dan, I mean Dan Quinn's on the freaking hot seat, right? That period, he is. Period. I don't know if that's ever a good thing for a coach. Uh, I see the win total at nine. I see that they were seven and nine last year. Let's walk through the schedule. I, it's probably I'm, good. I'm it's a leaning, good number, right? I'm <laughs> That's you know that's my pet peeve, Ryan. When gambling other the other guys, they go, "Hey, the win total's at eight, and uh, yeah, I just see this team as eight and eight. That's you not know, a Sean, pick, that's Sean. You gotta prediction. you gotta know when to not make a bet. You know, I, I'm gonna. You know pass. what I don't listen to podcasts for? I don't listen to a podcast for them to tell me what they're not betting on. Yeah, that's not useful. No, that's not actionable information. <laughs> I don't live my world in the inverse. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Okay, so fire up the Nas tank. We're picking every game against the spread like we've done since 2011 and every fucking win total. Okay. Walk at me Minnesota. The schedule. I'm leaning over, but I could be talked out of it schedule-wise. I think there are a lot of things to think that this team should be good. Mm -hmm. Should be good. I, I just worry slow start could have could, could be a complete catastrophe. And, and also, you just – it is a really tough – let's go through it. At Minnesota, Philly, at Indy, Tennessee. I mean – Sorry, walk one more time. At Minnesota, loss. At uh, Philly at home. At Indy, Tennessee at home. Hmm. Oh, I, I mean, all right, so you get a, a non-conference road spot for Tennessee. That, that's, that's probably a win. The Falcons have the Eagles number, right? What? No, of course not. <laughs> uh, they've, they've they've won the last three against the Falcons. Look, uh, I I think I'm not a huge Dirk Cotter guy. If but he could fall into the shitty coach, good coordinator. If there is category, if there is an opinion, easily. I'm tr I'm starting to kind of back away from it. Was my like, yeah, the Falcons are a good bet to to go up. 
I do think they just the fact that they have four road games in those first six games. It's just tough, especially when you have a situation where you have a complete turnover at the coaching. Yeah, th- with that, the that exception was, of the head coach. <laughs> what are we going? Are we going one and three here? Are you are you going to be ge- two and two? Feels generous. I, I I think two and two because I think, and this this uh, Andrew Luck calf injury is. I don't know if you've seen the breaking news on that, but this seems like possibly a legit concern. I don't think it'll actually stop him from playing, but it could impact what he does. Andrew and, Luck and sits Colts, out a year at a time. <laughs> the Colts started off really slow last year, so I think that's actually a winnable road game for them. I'm not high on the Vikings because last I checked, they they still have Kirk Cousins, right? And they guaranteed him $80 million. Uh, <laughs> Hold on, is this a prime time game? <laughs> no, it, it's the it's well, but it's a big game because it's their opening game. <laughs> I don't think that Zimmer's going to be out there with an eye patch. Uh, I I think they go at least two and two. Uh, you could talk what? Me, you could talk me into three and one because that the, Titans game is very winnable, and I think they split between the Vikings or Colts. I think they they could pull out one I, of those. I'm going to go two and two. I. I, I I am also somewhat bullish on this team, but you're going to go three and one. Yeah. You're no, no, no. Two and two. I two said I two. could be talked into three and one, but you're not doing it. You're at not doing. I'm not talking. No way they're going three and one there at Houston, at Arizona, Rams, Seattle. Jeez. It's just the schedule is just too, too much. I, I Two and two. But that's even that's even the stretch. I think they should beat the Falcons and they win one of the home. Games. They beat the Cardinals. You mean, and, yeah. and they, 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 they are the and Falcons they, and they, they probably take, I mean, that's a bad spot for C. I'll, I'll go two and two with you. I feel like we're being generous here. Yeah. By week at new Orleans, they've not played a divisional game yet. Another scheduling quirk. Mm. I didn't notice this, but you see this final eight games, six divisional games at new Orleans at Carolina, Tampa, New Orleans. So let's just say they I think two they and could, two. I think three and one here. I think they could get hot. I'm gonna say two and two again. Carolina at home at San Francisco. Jacksonville at home at Tampa Bay. That would be the classic. They need the they need the Tampa win for like a playoff spot and they just blow it. Tampa wins a meaningless game to get a worse draft pick. I think uh, I'm going to go three and one, oh, which is maybe a little high, but I, I think they could finish strong. I'm not high on San Francisco. I, I The Falcons are a team that can win regular season home games. And maybe uh, it feels like they lose one of the division games there. I'm going to I'm going to go three and one with you, Sean. All right. So you ended up. I was leaning somewhat generous. You're ten and six. I'm nine and seven. Mm. As predicted, the number looks good. I felt like I was very, very generous, and I got yeah. to nine, which which leads me kind of to, on the generous side as well for me. If, if you're putting the old gun to my head, Sean, mm-hmm. I think I have Cocked. to take the under here. Okay. No, I don't. You're not putting your <laughs> cock to my head. It's, it's no, a the gun. gun's cocked, Ryan. Oh, okay. I'm going over because I got him at ten. But it's not the best play for me in the division. It's I'll a tough schedule. Now, if they can get through, if they can win two out of those first four road games, kudos to them. They're on their way to hitting the over. I just, I'm not sure it's going to happen. Carolina, Sean. Carolina, the Carolina Panthers, home to my good buddy, my pal, Sham Newton. Here's what you got, uh, veteran additions. Chris Hogan, Aldrick Robinson, Matt Paredes, ooh, Gerald McCoy. That's uh, big. Yeah, that's not, not not bad. Bruce Irvin. Early draft picks, uh, Brian Burns, offensive tackle, Greg, Mr. Reliable Little, my good buddy, Will Greer, Christian Miller, offseason losses, Devin Funches, kind of hurts them, Matt Khalil, uh, Ryan Khalil, just cleaning out the Khalil bros. Julius Peppers. That that one probably hurts. Kyle Love, Thomas Davis, 
Maybe he wasn't up to the same Thomas Davis, but that guy was a fucking warrior. It's hard not to think about him in the, when he played in the Super Bowl with the stapled up arms. That was the last time I backed the Panthers. <laughs> And Cam Newton comes out in gold shoes in the Super Bowl, and I just immediately knew I was fucked. Yeah, that was bad. Mike Mike Adams and safety Denoris Cersei as well. They're out of there. They really improved the pass rush, and I I think they 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 really went after that defensive line deficiency they had last. Win total year. right now seven and a half over is minus one sixty under a juicy plus one thirty. <laughs> Plus 550 on the division, 2,500 on the conference, 3,500 on the Super Bowl. Here are my big thoughts on the Panthers. First off, switching from a 4-3 to a 3-4. No problem. That never works. That Not right away. <laughs> you just It just takes more time. There's yeah, always something. <laughs> now, I'm going to read you a quote okay. from Sir Cam. And let me, Sir Cam. What does this say about a guy's shoulder? Tell me. This is from WFNZ AM FM. It's still a work in progress, he said last week. One thing I wanted to work on was just being honest with myself, knowing when to sit out of practice and working on my body. He's a big fan of self-care. I'm as hungry as ever, but guys that are on board on offense need me to be my best self. That sounds like a guy who's already laying some groundwork for uh, – his disappointing season that to me is <laughs> when i when i'm golfing i do the same sort of thing right oh these clubs are uh, rentals or yeah i didn't i i think i tweaked something in my lower back i still want to play but uh, just just so you know if i'm if i'm yeah. off my game a little bit managing expectations chris hogan yeah when was the last time a white receiver went outside of new england and performed at a high level great question adam Thielen. Was he in New England? Is he a white guy? No, yeah, he, I'm just I'm okay. Keekly, his brain. What more do we need to say? That thing is severely Rest damaged. In peace. <laughs> Torrey Smith, he's a part of the offense. Last time Torrey Smith had more than forty catches, two thousand fourteen. <laughs> Not much of a pass rush. They they draft Brian Burns. The which, pass rush will be back, I think. It it should be better, but again, a, a rookie what are they good for five sacks six sacks it's really hard to bring in a rookie because they just don't know the moves and you're transitioning from a four three to a three four uh, is luke keekley going to remember they're playing uh, a that, three four versus a four three that is a good question i mean gerald mccoy certainly a big pickup he was he's helpful but also no he's he's more than helpful he's a very good player he's, he's good interior Bruce pressure Irvin is another pass rusher he can teach the young fella how to rush the passer how to as they say, Sean, you got to have a plan when you're rushing the passer. G Gerald McCoy, though, coming off not a super dominant year, only six sacks and only six tackle for losses. TFL yeah, is playing called. for the Bucks. What are you gonna do? Warren Sharp has them facing the second toughest schedule in passing games. We actually have a uh, and we have a question here at one Johnny Bell. Newton has a winning record every other year. Is he is he back to a positive this year? Ryan, that's probably where you're going to take over. I mean, the the juice on the win total would indicate that yes, he is going to be right around 500 there. Real uh, quick on the on his career win loss. Let's talk about it. Six and ten, seven and nine, and then this is where the alternating starts. Twelve and four, five eight and one, fifteen and one. Oh man, he's an MVP. This is the next era of Cam Newton. <laughs> oh, six and eight. What happened? <laughs> Oh, 11 and five. They figured it out. He's, he's taking the next step. Oh no. Another six and eight. 7.2 yards per attempt last year, which not horrible considering he doesn't know how to throw the ball anymore. He's working on his throws. He's <laughs> trying new stuff with his throwing motion. This is you what can't, I you can't do that in the NFL. You can't. The, and and my and sure, good, I know you, you my you, prediction you. on the Panthers highly biased. I don't like this Cam Newton character one bit, <laughs> but if my boy, I, I'm I'm really torn because if Will Greer comes into this lineup, look out America, and my win total totally out the window. So oh, I, I probably I, won't I, make it a lock, but yeah, I'm leaning a certain way. If you can't. <laughs> 
I, I'd say this though. I the Panthers of the teams in the NFC, I I do feel like they have very high variance, right? Everything could click and they could be they could have a pass rush back, they could be staunch against the run, they could be a dominant running team that's also slinging the rock because Cam shoulders better and his new throwing motion. I know you, Sean, staunch believer that you don't change your throwing motion in the pros. You, Name me one you, guy. You refuse to do who it. I know. Figured out his throwing <laughs> motion it, while performing at a high level as an NFL player. Everything can click in this. Like, like he's got that. He's got like a. T, he had like a T Rex arm, and <laughs> and maybe it was because he's he didn't have a rotator cuff, but you can't just regrow the rotator cuff. But when you're playing win totals, you don't necessarily want to absorb all the risk, right? There are a lot of question marks swirling around this team. There are a lot of question marks. I mean, Chris Hogan, Christian McCaffrey, are they the same guy? <laughs> are they? It, Maybe. We did, don't know. I, I assume Christian. they're going to just start hanging out in a lacrosse game is just going to break out between the two of them. What do you have to say about the the words of the uh, the owner? Perhaps Cam Newton going to sit out a full year, kind of let kind of let it slip that uh, they were intrigued with what the Colts did with Andrew Luck. <laughs> when was that? I missed that. Recently. Is this the new non gropey no, racist this is like, owner? This is like yeah, this is the not. <laughs> was it was he a rapey owner or a racist owner? I, I think remember. he was uh, rapey, but he also had a. Uh, There's also some other things that were maybe kicked around that. Yeah, it's a it's a different, again different kind of R and R. Thankfully, down there in the South. thankfully people don't sue us so. I, I maybe I just added the racist thing in there inadvertently. Well, but it is the South, Sean. You it <laughs> it wouldn't be a, like a, it's it's not a bad mistake, right? Just a minor mistake. He's probably not the progress most progressive uh, <laughs> gentleman of all time. But uh, the reality uh, of the ma win total is sitting there right at seven and a, and a half. It's it's kind of enticing. You can see that people are clearly taking the over with the juice, even when you slide over to that division price. It's like, ha. Huh, that's interesting, right? Because this team could be good. They have the playmakers on the field. DJ Moore, he looks like he's primed to Steve be a playmaker. Steve Smith doesn't want him on his fantasy team if you saw that clip. Oh, that's hilarious. What if Greg <laughs> Olson's back? Again, lots what of what if. What if Olson's back? Should we walk through the schedule? Let's do it. Sean, first four, Rams at home, Tampa at home on a Thursday night, at Arizona, at Houston, that's, okay. That that's a tricky. Uh, I mean, Cam's is Cam right? I'm gonna say one and three. So they're lose. They're beating the Bucks on Thursday night, or the Cardinals on the road. Uh, I you know I like Cam Newton. Sean. The the Thursday night game isn't as valuable to the home team early on. And Bruce Arians, I think, is a better coach than Ron Rivera. I got a lot of Bruce Arians love coming up. They have the Bucks at home, a divisional game. They that that they're gonna it's gonna be must win because they're probably gonna get beat by the Rams. And then you go ten days rest and play the the air raid offense. I actually I'm gonna go two and two here. I think there are two winnable spots for this Carolina team, and it it doesn't it, go it, poorly not, till it's later. Not crazy. It's not crazy. I, I know it's not crazy, Sean. That's why I'm doing it. What the fuck? Jacksonville at Tampa Bay in London by week at San Francisco, Tennessee at home. There are at least two winnable games in there. One and three. One. All right. They're going to lose to Jacksonville and Tennessee at home and, and lo Tampa in Jameis Winston's going to be gonna in the reveal. fuck. I'm not going to reveal. Jameis Winston is going to be in London. Yeah, guy and won't that, get into any trouble. You think that's going to go well? <laughs> you Under Bruce that. Arians, Bruce Arians, that's his boy. They're going to be out eating dirt, bangers and mash. See, that's the problem. Winston's going to hear bangers and mash, and he's going to think <laughs> about something else. They don't have Uber there. Maybe he'll be <laughs> all right. They probably do have Uber there. Uh, Sean, I, I, I'm a hater, okay? What do you want from me? I'm not going to give them two wins there. Is it weird to say three and one here? Go for it. Yeah, I'm doing it. 
All right, Sean. Next four at Green Bay, Atlanta, at New Orleans, Washington. This is where it starts to go south. One and three. I'm also going to go they one and three. They might be able to beat the Redskins at home. <laughs> Boy, the Redskins Why do look I hate bad. Cam Newton so much? It's The, the Redskins look it's bad. It's the Superman thing. It's just he's just at Atlanta, annoying. Seattle at home, at Indy, New Orleans at home. Will that New Orleans game matter? I think it might. I think they go two and two down the stretch. I'll say two and two. I'll throw them a bone. Almost feeling bad. Sean, I got them going eight and eight. You got them going six and ten. Yep. Uh, Once again, the number's pretty pretty close to right there. If you adjust (laughs) the the juice of minus one sixty, we're right around eight. Again, not not a position I'm looking to get involved with. If I was going to fuck around with anything here. A lot of value on this under, though, especially at plus 130. If you like the under, absolutely. Which I do. Because historically, it's good to bet against a team who quarterback doesn't have a shoulder. (laughs) Well, you're a Will Greyer fan, though, Sean. That is true. But Cam's going to play through it and just play horribly. Kramer. You've been a uh, football pool manager for a decent portion of your life, right? All right. And whenever you're managing a pool, you don't want to. You don't want to have. First off, you don't want to have to pay to do it. So I got to go to Play Balto. That's right. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com. Click the Play Balto link to sign up today. Fully customizable. Any different style of game you want to play, pick them against the spread, eliminators, survivor pools. They got uh, they got different ways to track buy-ins. That makes it really easy. They've streamlined the entire management process. Instead of hours plugging away, it's now minutes. You can get started on Balto in 60 seconds or less. That's right, 60 seconds. If you go on these other big name sites, it's a bunch of ads, it, it just becomes a pain in the ass. And also, you know, play Balto, new to the market, they care about their customers, great customer service, easy to talk to the guys if you have any sort of issue. But more importantly, it's a site designed for pool style betting. That's what it was designed for, that's what they created. You don't need like some old, outdated, lackluster site. Looks like it's from the early 90s. It's football season. If you're listening to the Sports Gambling Podcast, you're probably the guy who knows what he's doing. You're probably the guy that they're going to come up to with the sheet like, hey, what do we do? And play Balto. They've uh, been with us for a while. Good company. Sponsored, uh, Sponsored us on March Madness. So, you know, they're down for the cost. And... We appreciate you guys support supporting companies that support the Sports Gambling Podcast. So, sportsgamblingpodcast.com. Get that play ball toe link today. Sean, one last thing about the Panthers. Let it rip. They have six spots where they're either on extra rest or the opponent's on a back-to-back road game. Ooh. So. I'm with you. Like, I, I do think lots of what ifs, but it, it just feels like the Panthers are going to randomly pop their head up. New Orleans Saints. Win total sitting at a staggering 10 and a half over plus 100. Under minus 130 minus 180 to win the division. Only plus 400 to win the conference plus 900 to win the Super Bowl over at my Vet ads. We got Latavius Murray, Jared Cook. Marshall Newhouse, Ryan Groy, Nick Easton, Mario Edwards, Malcolm Brown, Marcus Shirelles. Who'd they get for the draft picks? Eric McCoy, oh, center yeah. guard. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, safety. We like him, too. Yeah, not a bad dude. Off-season losses. Jermon Bushrod, Max Unger, mm. retired. Tyler Davidson. Manti Teo. Wanted to spend some quality time with his girlfriend. Family. Remember that? He had a fake girlfriend. <laughs> How did that happen? How many years ago was that? How did that happen? <laughs> it seems impossible that that could happen. It was uh, it was a simpler time, Ryan. <laughs> this fucking guy made she up a girl. She went to a different high school. You don't know her. <laughs> Safety, Kurt Coleman. 
former uh, Eagles dud. So the New Orleans Saints, right? Wow, we got screwed. <laughs> they really, if you're a Saints fan, I, I like making fun of them for complaining about getting screwed. No. If you want to, uh, the Eagles, they could say they oh, were. Here uh, we go. The Eagles could say they were one play away. Oh, we got screwed because Alshon Jeffrey dropped the ball. Uh, it was a little different. You got to stop worrying about the call. They've had two of the worst playoff outs back to back with the their <laughs> douche, the I miracle mean. in Minnesota, mm. and then the non call yeah. a- against the Rams. Either way, you need to stop pitching. Are we worried that Michael Thomas now got paid? He Maybe. got paid. Sheldon Rankins, he tore his Achilles in the Eagles he, game. He ain't what he's on the pups. So what? He's on the pups. Seven. He claims they're going to be back second half of the season, but. Man, if you're a giant fat dude playing defensive line, you blow out your Achilles. It's going to take a long ass time. You saw Kobe Bryant after he tore his Achilles. Sheldon Rankins, that's a tough one. Lattimore, he's good, but rest of the secondary kind of questionable. Also, they were Saints were Saints were like a close win darling. They won 5 games by four or fewer points. It's always a regression time. They face the Bears and Rams defense uh, with extra rest. It's always a bit worrisome. But with Drew Brees, and the eye test definitely backs this up, post-Thanksgiving game where he took that shot <laughs> and he got, he got the crap knocked out of him in that Thanksgiving game, his deep ball in particular really dropped off. Post-Thanksgiving, he was balling out before that. But uh, after that Thanksgiving game, his deep ball, 41% completion percentage, only 10.2 yards per attempt, which normally you would think that's awesome. But when you're just specifying the deep ball, that's actually a really low number. And one touchdown, two interceptions. You saw in the playoff game, didn't take a bunch of deep shots. A positive for the Saints. But Drew, you can do anything you put your heart to. You can do anything you put your mind to, sons. Jared Cook, that should be helpful. They still got Kamara. They still have Sean Payton possibly bugging the opponent's <laughs> locker room. I, I'm slightly down on the Saints. And ten, I, I think I just don't like the number. I think the Saints are going to be in the mix. I just don't. I'm not going to – certainly not going to lay juice to bet them to win the division. And ten and a half – before we walk through the schedule, I'm leaning ten and six here. Ten kind of feels like they're ceiling. I mean – you highlight a lot of the regression indicators in the Saints. The big thing you want to you want to throw out there though is just the, you know, Drew Brees is great. He's still playing great, but he's really not like you want to talk about a home road, an indoor outdoor disparity. Drew Brees was pretty much useless on the road, and while they were a thirteen win team and they're going to have some regression, it, you know, we're coming back to that conversation with like, oh, okay. So they three games of regression is probably about right. They probably are somewhere in that ten win uh, team, but at some at some point, Drew Brees just it stops right. Just like Peyton, it it happened fast. Mm. We we got a, we got a wide receiver who got paid right. That that's trouble. That's never good, right? How many how many Marvin Harrisons are there out there who are just going to go about their business, not make a fuss? <laughs> Well, so Marvin Harrison, <laughs> Marvin Harrison takes care of business. And if you want to go down a rabbit hole, look up Marvin Harrison and just just Google Marvin Harrison and murder. And uh, <laughs> someone needs to do a podcast on that. Jesus Christ. Uh, he would definitely be uh, canceled, as the kids say. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I'm not sure I get the Latavius Murray hype. Uh, Mark Ingram, I think. I think object fairly objectively it was a much different type of running back. I know the fantasy nerds will cite Latavius's Latavius Murray's effectiveness around the goal line. But you got Kamara. But but it mattered because they ha- they were that run first team last year, and that's how they kind of got around Drew Brees not being super effective, especially on the road. Um, Jared Cook, another guy. Like I don't know what what he brings to that team. I, I, he's not a blocker. And again, I think this team is going to be at their best when they are in there, able to smash the ball down the throat, get the ball to Kamara in space, 
and then you know hit, hit Michael Thomas on those uh, underneath routes like they they did all all last year. Sean, I, I think we should walk through the schedule. Let's do it. We are going to walk through the schedule, but what I would want to point out is this team. I I don't think they can continue to be good on defense. Uh, well, they were above well, and, average and we last actually, year, but we have third some... against the run, 22nd against the pass. It, it's one of those things where at some point the de- when we when the defense goes back into the bottom five, they just can't compete. Um, we actually have some listener questions, Ryan, that kind of oh. hit on this. At Mr. Bank 99, do you think the Saints regress a lot this year? I really think Breeze in the O line takes a big step back, but would appreciate your POV. I I think they regress, not fall off a cliff dramatically. And uh, that's not me hedging my bets. I just, instead of 13 wins, probably 10. I, that's kind of what I'm feeling here. And we got another question at the real lowercase h. Is there a division with more fraudulent, quote unquote, good quarterbacks than this one? Breeze age regression coming in a big way this year. Other three vastly overrated. I, I kind of see where he's coming from, and I think that shot that Breeze took in that Thanksgiving game, the numbers seemed to back it up, and that did seem to change him a pretty pretty big. Uh, I, I'm not a Cam Newton guy, and I think Matt Ryan's fraudulent as a quarterback overall, but – I think he can get you some regular season wins and pad his numbers enough. So. I, I think it's unfair to say he's not clearly the number two guy in the divisional group. Matt Ryan? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So you go Breeze, Ryan, Newton. Winston, then Newton, right, Sean? I'm hopping oh. on the Sham bandwagon. Okay. Drew Breeze, passing DVOA at home, 64.7 or 0.1% on the road, 9.8%. Do you have a list so. of his, his DVOA? Game to game, I yeah. do not in front of me. Okay, because I, I it, 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 the eye test definitely saw that drop off, but it, I, I think a lot of the stats kind of back that up as well. But let's walk through the schedule. I believe it, Sean. First four: Houston on Monday night at the Rams, at Seattle, Dallas at home. Danger. Mm, they're gonna be good this year, right? Danger. Dak and Zeke getting the band back together. Rain. Had another D lineman. <laughs> Two game suspension. Yeah, no big deal. Uh, look, this uh, they're not losing at uh, Houston on an opening day, period. Opening Monday night uh, to boot. They'll certainly they'll have the Rams re- revenge spot, too. They'll have the listening devices installed. But Saints have been sneaky bad early. If you don't recall, Sean Payton got whacked by that Bucks team. Yeah. At home. I think they were what? Like double digit favorites. So, something to keep in mind. I think they I, I th- this is two to me this is two and two at the best. I'm, they could start slow. I'll go two and two. I'll go two and Definitely two. Definitely beat the Cowboys. They're a pile of trash. Hopefully. We can only we can only be so lucky, Sean. Tampa Bay at Jacksonville, at mm. Chicago, Arizona, at mm. home. Now, I mean, again, degree of difficulty is is there. For this Bucks team, that's a division game, but they are at home. They're gonna in take Jacksonville. Care. And, well, again, in Jacksonville, outside, and in Chicago, those are like kind of the two worst turfs for this dome team to play in. Cardinals at home, they should take care of them. Hmm. I'll say three and one. Two and two. Because I want to get to ten games and I'm adjusting it, but that that at Jags at Bears run will be tough for the Saints. I mean, they're not winning the Bears game. It comes down to the Jacksonville game. How good will the Jacksonville Jaguars be? Uh, they do have big again, dick nick. Grass. So I'm going two and two. You're going three and one? Yeah. Bold. Bye week, Atlanta at Tampa Bay, Carolina at Atlanta on Thursday night. Hmm. This is tricky, man. I'm I'm going two and two again. It's weird. They should. Hmm. Yeah, it's division games too. Shit. I'll go three and one. Give me three and one there. You're really stretching. 
San Francisco at home, Indy at home, at Tennessee, at Carolina. I think they go three and one down the stretch. Uh, I'll go two and two here. They they blow a game they shouldn't. So you got, what do I got? Nine and seven. You got ten and six. Yeah. You like this division, Sean. You're bullish on the South. Oh, I gave the Panthers six and ten. Uh, and I thought, I think I was best case scenario for the saints at 10 and six. Uh, so I, I'm really liking the under the more like walking through that schedule. I probably, I probably should have given them a nine and seven somewhere. I just think they'll be up against that win total and minus minus one thirty isn't enough juice to scare me away from them. It does feel like there is this division has potential for another another tight one they're gonna be yeah it's, it feels like 10 games may win the division but then there'll be two teams that are like 10 and 6 9 and 7 and then the two other teams will be like 7 9 6 and 10 there's not gonna be it, it doesn't feel like they'll have a bottom four team in the league in this division but it also doesn't feel like they're they have a one or two seed in here as far yeah. as the playoffs Moving on to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Big news, bringing in Bruce Arians, coming off a 5-11 and season. Win total set at 6.5, over minus 120, under minus 110. Division, 850, conference, 3,000. Super Bowl, plus 10,000 over at my bookie. Veteran additions, Rashad Perryman, Earl Watford, and Dominican Sue. Ooh. Uh, Shaq uh, Barrett. Dion Buchanan, Kentrell Bryce, punter Bradley Pinion, draft picks, Devin White, love that guy, out of Michigan, Sean Bunting, uh, Jamel Dean, Mike Edwards, Anthony Nelson, drafted a kicker, Matt Gay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> writes itself, Sean. Losses, they lost with Magic, Deshaun, Adam Humphreys, Vinnie Curry, Gerald McCoy, Quan Alexander, Brent Grimes, Andrew Adams. Feels like the last shot here for the old Jamison Winston, as I like to call him. But here to save you, Bruce Arians. Bruce Arians as a head coach in the National Football League. 49 30 and 1. Wow. He's only had one sub 500 season in the last six seasons, and that was 2016 with a dumpy Cardinals team that he still got to seven, eight and one. He's just a winner. Unlike a guy like Pat Shermer, who's 15 and 34 in his career. Bruce Arians is a guy that just wins games. He's never had a six win season. So if you're taking the under in this Bucks teams, you're betting Bruce Arians to have a historically bad season. Yeah. That one, uh, I think it was 2017 Arizona team, just completely decimated by injuries. That guy grinded out an eight-win team. I mean, you saw it when someone else took over. I'm, I'm, what was it, Vance? Or who was the Cardinals coach last year? Oh, the 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 defensive patsy from the Panthers. <laughs> yeah, I can't, th- I can't even think of his name. Yeah, that guy. Never you saw had a what chance. happened after. I mean, he was getting that team to 500. He got Carson Palmer to an NFC championship. Yeah, game. they the Bucks they were right up there with uh, Atlanta. Bucks actually had the most injured defense last year, last in defensive efficiency in back to back years. It kind of just has to get better for the Bucks defensively. They're also switching from a four three to a three four, which I would normally kind of be against. But yeah, you're I think scrapping garbage, you know, might as well get a couple yeah, shekels for that copper. So. They're in a different situation where Carolina, whereas Carolina's defense wasn't historically bad, and the only place they can go is up. The Bucks defense, that's where they're at. And if anyone can get anything out of Jamison Winston, <laughs> Jameis Winston, I've really programmed my brain to see Jamison. <laughs> if anyone can get anything out of him and then Dominic and Sue, it's I think a man it's who Bruce eats Harris. dirt. And again, the Bucks had shitty special teams. Oh, what's an easy know. way coming in? What's an easy way if you're a head coach, you come in. Chip Kelly did the same thing. He really went out of his way to focus on special teams, yep. and that's how you flip the script from a four and twelve team to a ten and sixteen, or or in this case, a five and eleven team to 
a seven and nine team. Look at you. Focus team. on the little things. And uh, lastly, quote from the Bucks GM it says, "Night and day with Ronald Jones." So we're already seeing the impact of a guy like uh, I got Bruce some Ernst. shares. I got some shares. We saw what he did with David Johnson in Arizona. I do also like Arians, Sean. But a couple of things we should point out: all of these quarterbacks that he has coached, yes. all these great quarterbacks, it's none true. of them had their breakout until the second or third year. You look at Big Ben, Carson Palmer, Andrew Peyton Manning, all of them. It took more than one year. So I don't know if this is going to be an insta fix for, fix for Jameis Winston. The other thing was just purely like Winston was pretty good last year. Uh, it, he was it, down the stretch, Sean, week 10 and on. Yeah. According to passing DVOA, he was fifth behind Baker Mayfield, Luck, Mahomes, and Breeze. That's pretty solid company. And, and also interesting, the the uh, the Tampa Bay quarterbacks combined oh, were yeah. like a top five fantasy quarterback. Oh, did I, I steal a nugget? No, I mean, but yeah, it, it, it was. They were, and, and not only that, they were the same person. Uh, they they very much are both. You, if you made a list today of how many starting quarterbacks in the National Football League are capable of throwing for five touchdowns and five interceptions in the same game, that list is not very long. Those two guys are on that list. And in fact, Sean Winston, 70% of his interceptions came in 30% of his games. So yeah. what does that tell you? Comes in bunches. If Arians and can correct rivals. that, if he can correct that moment, where you're in Vegas and you've lost the thousand dollars you you brought, and instead of just saying, "Oh well, tough trip, tough night," I'm gonna I'm gonna come back tomorrow and try again. You go to the ATM and you lose that thousand, and then you go back and get the cash advance and lose that five thousand. That's what Winston is doing here. No risk it, Ryan. No biscuit. Oh. And if you've ever given your fingerprint to a teller window. <laughs> You know, Sean, it's we've bad all when you, been, we've when all you pick up the before. phone and then they play a <laughs> they play a disclaimer from Gamblers Anonymous. If you or a loved one has trouble gambling, you're just hitting like <laughs> operator, Zero. operator, Zero. give Zero. me give me all the money. I don't care if it's twenty five percent interest. <laughs> they really they just murder you at the casinos. Twenty two percent interest. How's and that a legal? Fee. How's that legal? Well, the financial. <laughs> How's it legal? It's legal because people agree to it. Here's what's interesting, and they pointed it out in Hard Knocks. Dirk Cotter, when he was on Hard Knocks, he brought in Jameis Winston yep. and said, yeah, we got a really good defense here. Yeah. So what we're going to need you to do is limit turnovers. Right? Yeah. Don't do anything risky. Yeah. Meanwhile, that Bucks defense finished last. Yeah, they were dog shit. And he was playing tight. He yep. wasn't playing loose. Arians comes in with his sick-ass Kangle hat and says, no risk it, no biscuit. You're good. You can't tell Jameis Winston not to throw interceptions, okay? Because he's going to throw yeah. those. But you want him playing aggressive because that aggressiveness is also going to get you the big shots that are going to help counterbalance those interceptions. Dirk Cotter was like, he was basically the guy playing blackjack who's only like, uh, what's the table minimum? <laughs> and then they complain when they move the table minimum up to $25. He's just betting $10 at a time. And you slowly bleed out, okay? Bruce Arians is the guy. He goes out of his way. He finds the three to two blackjack, and goes. You know what? I'm feeling a heater. I'm gonna start piling the the chips in. Press, pressure. And that's how you actually get some movement in blackjack and in the National Football League. I I also think there. You know, granted, he was suspended for three games. He was coming off the Uber incident, quote unquote, Sean. But he. It doesn't help when you have a, a, a competition for your job throughout the season either. So if you want to talk about kind of tangential forces that may have I'll allow it, yeah, led. I mean, I guess you could even make the argument for it impacted uh, Fitzpatrick as well and the team as a whole. But yeah, I think the story is about the defense. I think the de the defense was god awful. I I, I do. I do feel like everyone's saying the same thing that Bruce Arians is just going to fix Jameis Winston. Like it's matter of fact, that's the part of all of this that scares me. 
Although I don't think it's reflected in the number six and a half. They went five and eleven last year. I think they 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 yeah, do. I think it opened at they, six. They do regress upwards a bit, but when again looking at the schedule, which we can walk through right now, not it's not it's not an easy schedule. Uh, they have I believe four spots where they're in a, a, a negative rest disparity situation. That is not not a good place to Blaine be. Blaine Train is a backup. <laughs> just not not something you want to see. The Blaine runner? The Blaine runner himself. Or or Blake Where's Blake Bortles at? Oh, that's and right. He's ribs. in LA. Our yeah, we close hang personal out friend. Going through this. This is, this the is courtesy of buccaneers.com. Oh. James Winston Bucks office Bucks offense has been allowed to gel. Look out. Look, Bruce Arians is a fun guy to root for. He went to Virginia Tech, my he alma is. mater. He's he's a good all around guy. He drank and paint. He ate to toughen dirt. himself he up. Drank paint. He was he, he's just he's lived an interesting life. I want to get behind this guy. Let's go through the schedule. I don't actually want to get behind him physically. I want to get behind him uh, emotionally and mentally. San Ryan, Francisco. You're, you're like uh, you're like <laughs> Lenny Dykstra here, pointing out the fact that hey, just so you know, I don't I don't want a finger in my ass. <laughs> Yeah, you know what this pro- you know what the problem with this Jameis Winston guy is? <laughs> Just so you know, I don't want anything. He's in my a gay butt. guy. All right, Lenny. <laughs> San Francisco <laughs> at Carolina on Thursday night. New York Giants at Wait, what did you say their schedule was? San Francisco. Oh, okay. At Carolina on Thursday night. New York Giants at Los Angeles Rams. Ooh, tough tough start. Three uh, and one. Who do they shock? That's the question. I, I think they shocked the 49ers. That's a pick them right now. What? Florida teams at Ooh. home. Florida teams at home in September. Humid as shit. You got a West Coast to East Coast. Let's go two and two. Yeah, they probably don't beat the Rams. I'll, I'll go three and one. Whoa. They don't. Dude, they, they did the same thing last year. They'll beat the surprise three and oh team. <laughs> I wish you could. The, the no one surprise surprise team. At New Orleans, Carolina in London by week at Tennessee at Seattle. All right. They get back to reality here. One and three. Uh, Things unravel. You're saying they're going to win the the game in London? They'll just kind of somehow win one of these games. Uh, See, I what? We haven't talked about Tennessee yet, but I, I'm not I'm not super high on the. I'm gonna go. You know, two, you're not on Marcus Mariota I'm, and or Ryan Tannehill. <laughs> two and two. I'm really. Why just, would you not be on board with that, Ryan? I'm really just not having an opinion today. Every team right around 500. You're one and three, Sean. Yeah, and that. So we're stretch. both four and four. Arizona, New Orleans, both at home at Atlanta at Jacksonville. Give me three and one there. You know Fuck that. It. I, here we go, Bruce. I'm gonna go three and one as well. Need an opinion. Indianapolis at home at Detroit, Houston, and Atlanta. Three road games to cl- or three home games yeah. to close it out. I think two of them are winnable. Let's go. Let's give me you know two. What? two. I'm gonna do something. Probably stupid. even more. I'm, I get you. Could, I'll go three and one. Uh, give me three and one. I, I'm all in on this Bucks team. Wh- what are we doing, Sean? Are we are we We're getting a position? Or are we just getting on the Bruce Arians train? Dude, I love Bruce Arians. Three and one for me as well, Sean. Ten and six. Wow. Oh, we both got ten and six. We well, are animals. You have three teams in the so you you know what? The Bucks go ten and six, miss the playoffs. It could uh all right. I'll go two and two for that last one, make them nine and seven. Cause I, I think no one's gonna be no one's going to be that good or that bad in this division. And that 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 was kind of my instinct going into this exercise and now it's really where I feel. But I mean straight up like they could they could have the best offense. They could have the best offense in, in this the division? division. You look at the skill positions. Yeah, Mike, we haven't we didn't Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, OJ Howard. OJ Howard we know what Bruce Arians has done with running backs. Bruce Arians is also one of these coaches that is a fan of giving his good players the ball. Uh, I, I, Jamie, it's it's Jameis Winston. Can he reduce the mistakes? 
while still being someone who's going to sling the rock? And can the defense just not be the worst? They were the worst last. Can can you get up to like maybe twenty? Statistically, you have to almost be some improvement. God damn it, Sean! All right, my lock: the Tampa Bay Bucks over six and a half. It's just I I pointed out that stat. He's never not won you seven games. Bruce Arians is a guy you hire if you want your team to be relevant again or, or competitive. Or the, the guy, and he's had a great track record of just kind of shepherding guys that have been a pain in the ass. He really yeah, does. Yeah, he, I mean, he coached Tim Couch. That Ryan, didn't work I out won't. Well. Expo- I won't. I won't say the joke myself, but okay. Ben Roethlisberger and Jameis Winston. There's some certain tendencies these two They're guys both have. They're big guys, six six. Yeah, but certain very, off the field, very girthy off the field things. They that both these guys, uh, personality traits, things they they they, they just <laughs> look. Sean, they don't and take Arians no ha- for an answer. Arians has helped Roethlisberger, and maybe he can get Jameis Winston back on <laughs> the same track. The, it, it's like the 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 scene where the the kid comes home drunk, and the dad just sits <laughs> him down with a bottle of liquor and says, "You want to drink? We're gonna drink." <laughs> uh, it's Bruce Arians with a gallon of paint. <laughs> So you oh, want you want to grab thought, an Uber, Uber? I thought you were going the other way. It's like, <laughs> oh, you want to force yourself on chicks? Uh, you know that's that's a funnier angle. Bruce Arians forcing himself on Ben Roethlisberger. Oh <laughs> uh, no! I don't need no bouncer standing on, on the door. Force himself on Jameis Winston. Like, oh, you think you're a tough guy? <laughs> what a great! I'll show re- you how how we do things around here. Bruce Arians is like the undercover, like the detective, <laughs> Officer Shack, hidden camera show. He gets just gets in Jameis Winston's car. And yeah, I'm here for him. the lemonade. Okay, <laughs> lock me up, Bucks. Yeah, double double lock uh, that. No, but come on, really? You're still my lock? Look at my numbers. Where am I going? You, I, I don't. I don't. You, feel... You're you're one and a half games off on the Saints under. Yeah, I'm three and a half games off on the Bucks. It's okay. clear, clearly my lock. And then uh, division plus eight fifty. I don't know if you like <laughs> cash, but. Uh, I'd highly recommend that. So I've already, <laughs> I've already bet on this and I'm like, I, I looked at it today. I hit, I hit the pending button. Cause I was, I wanted to look at my portfolio of season futures. And I'm like, yeah, this is fun. And then I look at the bucks bet. And I'm just like, you're an idiot. Something's going to go horribly wrong. And in seven weeks, this is just going to be a, a money pit waiting to be burned at the end of the season. No, though, even worst case scenario, they'll still have like three, four wins. I feel like we did the same thing last year. I feel like we're Were suckers for the Bucks. No, because I've been I've been off on the Bucks as a. Do you have any other plays in the division, Sean? I went three unders, one over. Yeah, I split over on two overs, two unders. Bucks are my best bet. I. I would. uh, What else would I like as far as interesting stuff? Uh, You could talk me into. uh, Here's the thing, too. I'm not high on them for conference but with their pedigree their playoff history just the level of talent their scheduling as far as the home road dome indoor outdoor falcons plus 1600 to win the conference that's a solid 16 to 1 bet i would think i'm not taking them to win the super bowl but 1600 they could you could easily make a case that they possibly end up in like a northeastern city and possibly in Pennsylvania for the <laughs> NFC championship game and end up with dismal results. But yeah, that's a nice hedging opportunity. I, I like the Falcons at sp- yeah. Get small play on the Falcons to win the conference at 1600. So I, I, I could see, I like the angle on the Falcons. I do think the Falcons have that legit contender again. The only team to replace three coordinators. And, I mean, and have any sort uh, of success. The Saints, 2007 Giants. The Saints clearly have an easier path and probably better talent, but at plus 400, there's not there's not any value there for me. So, uh, you know, I I'm obviously I went under or I went nine and seven on their win total, um, but I, I it it still wouldn't surprise me if they're back, right? Like. If if Breeze is going to be okay, they're going to be a contender. 
I, yeah. I think we'll know fairly early. I don't think this is gonna it's gonna be a team that surprises you unless it's on the de- defensive side of the ball. Do you are we giving out two win totals for this one or? What no, are we doing? just I'm doing just, one lock and I gave you a long shot. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm gonna stick with it. But throw give, me a long shot, Ryan. I'm I'm with you on the or something interesting. I'm with you on the Bucks plus eight fifty. I'm with you on the over for the Bucks. And if you're gonna ask me uh, t- to come in here and make make one more one more wager i guess it would be it it would be, even though i have eight and eight for this panthers team it would probably be the under there oh I, I just I, i'm not wow looking you're right. off the sham i'm not off the train thing. but it, it, for the price I, I as i went through it i was fairly generous i got them to eight and eight but i what i said it the what ifs there's so many what ifs i don't want to absorb the risk and if I'm thinking the ceiling is eight and eight, that means that they're safer. Taking the under on the Panthers is like taking Jarvis Landry in fantasy football. <laughs> he's he's got a nice high floor, yeah, but he's not going to blow you away. So I I think this. Uh, let's do it, Panthers. Ryan, yes. thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. Legacy Stadium opening night. NFL, we will be there in beautiful Las Vegas partying it up. Hit us up if you're going to be there, so we'll save you a spot, a chair. If not, tune into the live broadcast. A lap, if you want. A lap? Yeah. What do you mean? I'll save you my oh. lap if you want to sit in my lap. <laughs> All right, I was going to go with the chair, but Ryan. Ryan's females only, Sean, please. <laughs> we, You know we have tons of female listeners. We do. We, we ha- the, the female listeners... Not huge numbers, but they are uh, they're diehard fans. Oh, <laughs> not huge numbers, but they're huge. No, well, possibly, but either way, they're supporting the sports gambling podcast. They got my vote, and uh, yeah, head over to iTunes, rate, review, share the new merch. It's out. It's there. It's legit, high quality stuff. Make sure you get in your orders ASAP so they're ready for NFL kickoff. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stecking the Money Green, and he is Ryan. R.I.P. Cam Newton. Kramer, let it ride.